In this video, I detail some of the steps involved in building an uncoiler. It should be all the really important steps to witness. I spent $64 on pallet jack load wheels, $55 on an axle shaft that I think I spent too much money on because I probably should have gone with a softer, easier to work with alloy because I don't think I really need such a hard shaft that's impossible to drill through and then requires me to do extra work instead of just drilling holes through them and putting cotter pins through them. And I guess I spent about $5 on mis miscellaneous stuff, um, including that scrap metal that you see me use, which is the stuff that I'm welding together. I flatten it along the bottom and I clamp these two clamps on when it was flat. I actually uh, clamped and drilled the wrong side sadly so it made it a little more difficult later and a little less perfect of an end product by the way this took five hours I'm glad it's done it's not that important to me now I'm just cutting it out. make sure the uh, metal can escape make sure the drill bit is straight straight enough for me straight enough for me <laughs> Ooh. Now, fancy people have some of those, like, vices that go with the drill presses, and I'm not one of those fancy people. So, just try to keep it straight while gripping on to those, um, clamps. It's not the best method. This is a 20 millimeter China drill bit. It was like $2 in a pack of 10, I think. And it's not exactly 20 millimeters, uh, possibly because it has a wobble in it. Maybe they're dejected items, and that's what they send over to the United States because they want to destroy us. Because that's kind of the culture in China. Now I'm putting in the pallet jack wheels and some spacers. Those spacers are like hold down washers that are used for hold down bolts that hold um, wood framed residential walls to the ground. That's just to give it some space in between the end position of the welded plate. Now I'm putting the shaft through all four um, to keep them all in line. <laughs> keep the two pairs together. Side note time. If you are using softer wheels with like a steel core and a poly, a poly exterior of the wheel, uh, it's going to have more friction as it rolls around. It's going to be less likely to mar the surface of your metal, however. How much welding is required? Probably not much. Who knows? And if I had to do this again, instead of that seven inch space between axle shafts, I would uh, I'd probably go down to six or five. This makes it easier to do smaller coils and also reduces the like prying friction going on between the rollers. Now, residential floors are pretty much never flat, unless you live in one of those fancy houses in which people knew what they were doing. So, certainly my garage floor is not flat. And I need to make little feet so that I can make it level if I need to. It's not absolutely, you don't need it absolutely level, but the more level it is, the less you'll be fighting the position of the coil by your draw angle. So basically, the angle at which you pull versus the level at which the coil is, or its inclination to, as it rolls, to um, slide right or left. Um, it's kind of like a balancing act. So the more in position that coil wants to stay as it rolls around, the less 
force is going to be required to keep it in position as you continue to unroll it. That's my theory anyway. I'm using the um, pallet jack load wheels as the holders to hold them, to hold these shafts upright while I weld on them. A little bit problematic, but it was mostly smooth sailing. I'm welding washers on one end and bolts on the other end. Washer on one end is just like a stop, so it doesn't go any farther, and the bolt is, well, it's basically a stop, so it doesn't fall off. If I had to do it again, I would make that steel plate maybe 10 inches wide instead of 12 and a half inches wide, just for a lot easier clearances around that pallet jack. And then I would have made the wheels kind of as short as possible, um, especially with a pallet jack that's 50 bucks and it doesn't really lift all the way. Uh, it would just be easier to get the coil over the wheels. <laughs> yes! That 1,700 pounds on hard nylon rollers is really easy to move. I've been rolling my 3,600 pound baby all over the concrete to unroll it ever since it was a baby.